I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show. That is McCotter, my colleague and co-host, WJR, the great voice of the Great Lakes, and the author of Liberty Risen. Thaddeus and I are going to wander down a path, it's a maze, and it resembles the world that Alice discovered when she went underground. This is not the Red Queen, however, this is the White House. The world consists of statements that are difficult to understand when you first read them. For example, Eric Schultz, the man is the Deputy Press Secretary at the White House. And most recently, in an exchange with ABC Network's Chief White House Correspondent Jonathan Carl, we learned that the Taliban is not a terrorist group. It is, according to Mr. Schultz, an armed insurgency. The quote goes like this. I'd also point out that the Taliban is an armed insurgency. ISIL, referring to the caliphate, ISIL is a terrorist group. So we don't make concessions to terrorist groups. Mr. Carl said, you don't think the Taliban is a terrorist group. Mr. Schultz said, I don't think that the Taliban, the Taliban is an armed insurgency. This was the winding down of the war in Afghanistan, and that's why this arrangement, referring to the Taliban 5 in exchange for uh, Sergeant Bergdahl, was dealt. Thaddeus and I are joined by Andrew McCarthy, who has a piece up at the National Review Online to explicate this unusual exchange. Andy, I have prejudiced it immediately by referring to Lewis Carroll. Forgive me, there was no other way to interpret this. I report routinely on the war these last years. How does it serve the White House press operation now, in 2015, to declare that 2 plus 2 equals 5? Good evening to you, Andy. Uh, Good evening, gentlemen. Great to be with you. Uh, I, I think, John, that what you're seeing is an administration that knows that it uh, intends to, uh, because of the course that it's taken, uh, it must uh, negotiate with the Taliban. Their goal is to bring the Taliban into a final negotiated settlement in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, and realizing that, and realizing that that puts them uh, in necessarily in the position of negotiating with terrorists, realizing that that uh, demonstrates that they've uh, actually replenished our enemies by giving Taliban commanders back to the Taliban while the enemy is still conducting terrorist operations against uh, our forces and our people, Uh, they have to blink reality. And as a result, they are in a state of denial, or at least want the country to be in a state of denial, uh, about the fact that the Taliban are terrorists. And that's really the, the... place that they've bought themselves into. That is? Well, Andrew, doesn't it also point out that the administration is loath for the American people to understand that these are the very types of individuals, these terrorists, the Taliban, that will be ruling Afghanistan after all the sacrifice of our men and women in uniform and their families? Yes, you're quite correct. I mean, that that is really what the uh, what the negotiated settlement, the diplomatic solution that uh, is at the end of this rainbow is all about. We're not only negotiating with them, we're pleading with them uh, to come to the table. In fact, uh, the transferal of the five commanders, at least one of whom is believed to be making efforts to go back to the jihad, uh, that, what that was about was not even uh, a solid concession of anything. It was basically to, to entice them to come to the negotiating table. And they certainly understand that uh, Obama is adamant about leaving Afghanistan, uh, and that means ultimately we're leaving Afghanistan to the tender mercies of the Taliban. Uh, And again, uh, they don't want to be in a position of being understood knowingly to turn uh, the great sacrifice that we've made for over a decade uh, over to terrorists, which is what we're about to do. It does not it does not follow from the reporting that is routine, Andy, and I want to press this. For example, we have a news report that a member of the Pakistani Taliban, there's an Afghanistan-Pakistan Taliban and a Pakistani Taliban, has now left the, the Taliban's allegiance and pledged allegiance to the Islamic State, which I think we could all agree, the White House just said, is a terrorist group. He is joining the Islamic State, the Caliphate, for a new construction they called Khorasan. In fact, Khorasan 
is Afghanistan, Pakistan, and uh, attendant provinces all rearranged into a fashion that suits the delusions of the savages at Raqqa and Mosul. I press that the deputy governor of Khorasan is a former Guantanamo detainee whom was released and is now back into the fight. So, the White House is depriving us of language in order to describe what is on the battlefield. A fresh report. A member of the Taliban pledging allegiance to the Islamic State, which is governed, at least in part, by a former Guantanamo detainee. Uh, I'm summarizing this, Andy, because I don't know what the payoff is. I do not see where the White House is, is taking us. We have a language. They're not using it. Well, John, the very thing that you've just described has been part of President Obama's strategy all along. Uh, he has contended over time uh, to have defeated or put on the path to defeat our, our jihadist enemies. They don't use the word jihadist, of course. Uh, and part of the strategy, since that objectively is not so, and here we are back in Alice in Wonderland again, uh, is to atomize these various terrorist uh, arms of, uh, of, of the global jihadist movement as if they were small, independently operated, uh, parochially concerned organizations that were not united by a single ideology of Islamic supremacism. The idea is to miniaturize the enemy so that it appears that the, the administration's made actual progress uh, against the global jihad, when in fact it has intensified to the point that al-Qaeda, uh, if you take all of its network together, is now uh, as much of a threat, if not more, than it was right before 9-11. And ISIS is now a parallel threat to, uh, to al-Qaeda. And I think actually... Uh, an organization that's really just broken off with Al Qaeda, and you had the terrific duo of, uh, of, of Tom Jocelyn and Bill Raggio on before. Uh, they have documented uh, on a number of occasions that there are attempts at rapprochement be between the ISIS side and, and the Al Qaeda side. So, uh, you know, I think it's a big mistake to fall into the trap of overanalyzing all these different. Uh, tentacles of the global jihad, what we ought to understand is that there's one Islamic supremacist movement that targets the West. That is? Well, Andrew, they're not really overanalyzing it, are they? They're really kind of trying to shoehorn it into their ideology, and it doesn't fit. This is not a case of a bunch of community organizing cells that have only taken to violence because the United States sucks. These are people with an ideology, a world view, and a goal of subjugating their fellow human beings in the region and killing those who have opposed them. Is this a case of an administration that just cannot admit that the real world is not what they wish it to be? Yeah, I think it is. I think they also think, uh, Thaddeus, that uh, somehow the power of their language can uh, turn or change reality on the ground. Uh, and I think no matter how many times they've tried that and how many times it's been seen to fail, uh, they continue to do it. So, you know, for that reason, for example, you had the, uh, uh, the loopiness a few years back where you had testimony from the intelligence community about how the Muslim Brotherhood was a, you know, moderate, largely secular organization. Uh, now, anybody who spent 10 minutes studying the Muslim Brotherhood knows that they are a rabidly anti-Western organization that actually has uh, a Palestinian terrorist organization uh, as, as one of its uh, main groups, Hamas. Uh, and yet the administration continues to use that position, and I think it's because they think if they say enough times that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is moderate, maybe that'll happen at some point. I began by comparing this to Lewis Carroll, that we're going down the rabbit hole. But, Andy, as I've listened to you, I've gotten another flash that's more alarming. This is newspeak by ignorant people. They're not aware of the fact that they're trying to mutilate our language in order to rearrange history. That is, they're seeking to rewrite the last 15 years of American struggle. 
and therefore they're depriving us of an understanding of who the enemy is. I do not believe it's intentional. They've drifted into this. Is it, is it defeatism, Andy? Is that it? Are they exhausted? Have they run out of talent at the White House? No, I don't think so, John. I think some of it is, uh, as you suggest, uh, it, not just ideological, but managing the news cycle uh, as, it, as it arises. Uh, but I, I don't think it's, uh, I, I think this really is representative of their worldview, which, a big part of which is that we are responsible for their actions. I think that's a sort of a self-absorbed way to look at the world. It's something that nullifies the fact that they have an objective ideology and judge themselves by their own standards, and that everything in the world that happens that is, uh, that's a bad development uh, is not actually... America's fault. They do the things that they do because their ideology drives them to it. But you do have people in the Obama administration who believe, uh, I don't think they sympathize with the terrorist tactics, but they do sympathize with the uh, Islamic supremacist narrative about the United States. Thaddeus, are we guilty of thought crimes for pushing back at the White House? No, you're not, John, because what you're looking at are people who are committed to the Jacques Derrida deconstructionist philosophy to help mass defeat and to in, to desensitize the American people to the prospects of what's going to happen because of the failed policies of this administration. And in protecting the language from the Orwellian use of it to create news speak and to mask the reality on the ground and the reality facing both the American people and those who wish to be free from the terrorist joke and threats and intimidation, you're actually doing everyone a service. It is what it is, and it must be dealt with as it is. And Lord Halifax and Neville Chamberlain's verbiage never did stop the Third Reich. The Ministry of Peace, Minipac, says it's not terrorism, it's insurgency. Andrew McCarthy of the National Review Online, Thaddeus McCotter, WJR, the author of Liberty Risen, and I'm John Batchelor.